hello everyone. Uh, this is Roger Killen with uh, Entrepreneurs International Network, uh, where uh, entrepreneurs uh, network with each other, uh, receive some training on very relevant uh, information regarding solopreneurs and entrepreneurship. Uh, uh, this evening, I, it gives me the greatest of pleasure to introduce uh, Jerry Foster, uh, speaking on the whole subject of, uh, uh, of um, uh, oh, the word is not coming to me, uh, speaking on the whole subject of branding uh, for very, very small businesses. Uh, Jerry, I've got uh, some questions that I would like to ask you but I think actually the best way to approach this is simply to invite you to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you uh, as it relates to your speaking subject for this evening. Over to you, Jerry. Well, first off, thank you, Roger. I am hyena happy and peacock proud to be here. You are such a rock star. And I just admire you for who you are and the difference that you make in the community. So everybody give Roger some love in the chat box, please. Sometimes he doesn't seem to feel, I think Roger needs a hug. Give Roger a hug, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so as I was sharing earlier, I am what's called a brand strategist as opposed to a brand designer. And just like someone who may own a house cleaning service says they don't do windows, while well, I tell people I don't do logos, swag bags, tote bags, websites, and things that people can see because great brands are built strategically and not visually. And we'll, we'll talk more about that. And I've been very blessed because I started my business, like I said, when I was 10 years old with a lemonade stand in 1985. <laughs> and I've had the opportunity to help over 100,000 small businesses from over 600 different industries in the past 30 plus years. And my specialty is working with service-based entrepreneurs. Those of you who offer expertise, some kind of gift, skill, talent, or ability to the world. And I show you how to amplify your uniqueness so you can magnify your impact because of the influence of your expertise. So today we're gonna to talk about a topic that is very dear to my heart, which you see on the screen, which is called get known, get found and get paid. How to create a brand that sells. And so my suggestion is that you take out a sheet of paper just in case I sell something, say something that's worth writing down. And if you don't have anything to write on, well, fortunately, Roger is taping this event. So here's the thing. We live in a brand conscious world. And when you talk about branding, there's five types of brands. So I don't wanna make any assumptions about what any of you know and don't know about this topic. The first type of brand is when you can brand a company. And often that's, time, that's called your corporate brand. So think Apple, think McDonald's, think Coca-Cola, okay? Those are corporate brands. And the second kind of brand is what's called a product brand. So for example, Coca-Cola has a product called Dr. Pepper. McDonald's has Big Mac and Apple has the iPhone and I everything else. And so those are all product brands. And a third kind of brand is when you are branding a service, any kind of service business, think Vistaprint, Think Stanley Steamer, carpet cleaning. I don't know if you have that in the United States. The fourth kind of brand are nonprofits. United Way, American Heart Association, American Cancer Society, make no mistake about it. Those are brands, okay? The only difference is that they're not looking for customers, they're looking for donors, right? And then the fifth kind of brand is what's called a personal brand. And that's for those of you who are solopreneurs and you are looking to reach more people and impact more people and be able to make a contribution to the lives of the people that you are serving. And so this presentation is really designed for those of you who are branding yourself primarily, and if that's you, say that's me, that's me in the chat box, or you may have a service-based business, and we're gonna talk about how to brand those services as well, but make no mistake about it, I'm not here to sell anything and I'm not here to do an infomercial this is all about the brand called you. So thank you again for turning out. It means the world to me. So I'm gonna share with you three big branding secret ways. And so that's my topic, which is big branding. 
which is about how to create a big brand and a strong message that sells. You'll learn more about that as we go along. But I'm going to share with you three big branding secret ways to create a magnificent brand that will really do three things. Establish your uniqueness and value. Communicate a clearer, stronger message because for a lot of entrepreneurs, that's an area where a lot of people struggle is finding the right words and finding the best way to connect with their audience and attract hungry, high paying clients. How many of you want some hungry clients? Raise your hands and say, that's me, that's me, that's me. And more importantly, ensure that your marketing works. That would be great, right? Because I hear all the horror stories about people who invest a lot of money in marketing techniques and marketing tactics, be it online, whatever, and they're not getting a return. Now, like I said, if you are a service-based entrepreneur, typically this presentation is designed for one of three people. One, there are those of you who perhaps are offering services, either as a service company or as yourself, and you want to transform that into a brand. So that may be one group of you. So instead of offering services, you're going to offer a brand because that's two different paths. And so in your case, I'm speaking to those of you who are looking to do what? Create your brand from scratch. The next group of people are those of you who already have a brand, or at least you think you have a brand. We'll talk about that in a minute. But you want that brand to be stronger like you see on the screen. And that's called rebranding. Maybe some of you have heard that word before. So the idea of rebranding is for those of you who are here and you're ready to do what? Refresh your brand. Hit the reset button. Re-engineer, reimagine, retool, revamp to make sure that you are putting out something into the world that can do what you want it to do. And if that's some of you, put that in the chat box as well. Because as you know, big companies rebrand all the time. Because it doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. You're simply doing what? What is that phrase we've learned during the pandemic? You're staying ahead of the curve. And then the third category are those of you who have a brand and your brand, excuse my language here, but your brand just sucks, okay? It's stale, it's stalled, it's in a slump, it's not doing much of anything and your brand needs to be fixed. And that's called brand repair. So you don't have to identify who you are. So this is really designed for those of you who are offering expertise, a service brand or a personal brand, because there's a certain way that you go about branding services that's very different, watch this, than branding a product. Think about it, because when you're branding a product, it's not, you're not able to see it. Excuse me, you're able to allow the consumer to do what? Sample the goods in advance. They can see, taste, touch, smell, or hear what it is about that tangible item, which is very different than what you have. So make no mistake about it, in this brand conscious world that we live in, branding is the foundational skill that every leader uses to clarify what makes you the better choice. Pay, please, pl please play, <laughs> no, <laughs> please pay <laughs> careful attention. Well, say that five times, Jerry. Please pay careful attention to what you see in gold because the most successful brands on the planet understand that in this brand conscious world that we live in, people prefer to do business with brands. And so in order for you to scale, in order for you to get to where you are now, from where you are now to where you want to be, you've got to make sure that you've got the strongest brand possible so that you are the better choice. Now, why do I also say this? I also say this because, and Roger, you're fine, it's very interesting. I read a statistic once which said, and this is before the pandemic, that there were 1.7 billion websites on the World Wide Web, 1. billion websites and countless social networks. And so what we're finding is that in this very crowded, turbulent, overcrowded online market space that each of you are competing in, it's getting harder and harder for any entrepreneur, write this down please, to do three things, stand out, get noticed, and be remembered, which should be the goal for each of you 
with your brand. I'll get those to you again. I said that too fast. Your goal is to stand out, get noticed, and be remembered for offering something unique so that you can then be rewarded for your individuality. Hmm. And so more and more entrepreneurs are finding themselves fading into the background. No one's paying attention to them. And yet, you know you have something great to offer the world. You know you have something that's going to benefit a lot of people. And so the challenge today is to not only make sure you're standing out getting those and being remembered, but to do it in such a way that you're looked upon as the better choice. Now, read this slide. And this is a quote that I, I had lots of quotes, but this is one that I really am proud of. And I'll say it, I'll read it out loud. People get inspired to invest on themselves, to work with you when they buy into your promise. Look at that word of an experience. Look at that word. That is the difference you will make in their lives and how you will deliver on that experience. So let's unpack that for a second. I feel that for those of you who are solopreneurs, you want to make sure that you have what's called a spot on market leading presence, okay? Which gets to how are you going to lead and serve and deliver? Which means that you first have to understand what a brand is. Because a brand is not what many people think it is. It's not your logo. It's not having a website or a book. It's not having social media, a social media presence. No, because a brand is more than simply what people can see. That's only a part of it. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. So the idea for each of you, look at that second word in gold, is to make sure that what you want to offer people is the experience of working with you. I heard some one of you all say that earlier, as opposed to telling people about the technicalities of what it is that you do. But more importantly, talk about how your brand will make a difference in their life. Now, you have to define what that experience is going to be, because that experience has to be something that is memorable and compelling and believable to someone. Then, of course, your job is to make sure that you are able to deliver on that the right way. Now, it's so amazing because we love our brands, don't we? People today love brands. And what we're finding is that particularly for those of you who are in the personal branding or the service branding space, you must create what's called a bond. Write that word down, please. By the way, I, I was a professor at four universities for 10 years, weekends and evenings. And so I'm used to telling people, once you turn 21, write it down. So please <laughs> don't be offended when I say write this down. Okay. But here's the thing. Your goal must be to get people to bond with you, literally fall in love with you. And in the process of that, they are connecting with you through your heart, as opposed to what you say through your head, because what you are speaking to them about is how your brand is going to inspire them in such a way to feel connected to your business. Does that make sense to anybody? And so right now, you might start asking yourself, okay, Jerry's talking about an experience. He's talking about the difference. He's talking about inspiring and connecting with consumers. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Because we love the experience. I once read a, a famous story about Walt Disney when he was sitting in a park with his wife, an amusement park. And he turns to his wife and says, I'm going to start my own amusement park one day. And his wife says, why would you do that? They're loud, they're dirty, the employees are rude. He goes, exactly. My park won't be like that. Mm, Disneyland. Anybody know what the experience? Write it in the chat box. What is the promise of Disneyland? Anybody know? Right? 
when you first walk into Disneyland, what does it say? Yeah, the happiest place on earth. So right now, you might want to start thinking about, you know, what is it that is going to be the best definition of your brand? And I want to ask you this question, which is, are you leveraging branding to its fullest potential in your business? Are you willing to do that? Because in this world, where some people prefer Coke over Pepsi, or some people prefer here in America, I don't know if you have this in, in uh, Canada, they prefer Lyft over Uber for, for ride share. I mean, we have all these preferences. Understand that people prefer certain brands because they feel they can get something from that brand that they cannot get anywhere else. And as a result, of you making the strategic decision to leverage branding to its fullest potential, whether through how you differentiate yourself or the messaging that you use on your website, in social media, through your any kind of di digital online marketing, whatever it is, it's all designed to leverage the magnificence of your brand. Now, I've been at this for a while. This is my fifth decade doing this work. I am a 35 year old baby boomer in case you're wondering, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I like Peter Pan, I don't wanna grow up Roger, but anyway, in my work with folks from so many different industries, I've discovered right now that there are three major challenges that are facing most entrepreneurs, particularly those of you who are service-based. The first one is not knowing that there's more to branding than, than your, oh, it's a typo. Than your, I just, by the way, I just created this over the weekend. So if you see a typo, this is fresh material, okay? All right. <laughs> Not knowing there's more to branding than your logo, colors, and anything else visually that represents your brand. Said another way, let's take Coke and Pepsi. I doubt the Coca-Cola drinkers prefer Coke because it's in a red can and the Pepsi people because it's in a blue can. It's what's inside the can that counts. And so the question I want each of you to think about, write this down is, what's inside my can? What is it that you can provide your market as an experience that separates you from the rest of the crowd? The second challenge is that there's a resistance to viewing branding as a priority. Oh yeah, many people look at brandy more as a nice to have as opposed to a must have, despite the fact that the studies show that the most successful companies in North America, let's just focus here, US and Canada, are brand driven companies who put out brands and not products or services. Because for example, brands like Nike and Starbucks have shown us that the products they offer are less important than the brands they market and sell. Because we love our brands because we associate something with what we're going to get from that brand that we're not going to get anywhere else. Hang on to that for a second. And then the third challenge is getting your marketing to be more effectively especially those of you who are thinking of building a sales funnel, running paid ads, hosting a challenge, offering a course, or creating an offer. All I can say to you right now is pump the freaking brakes because the, your marketing tactics, whatever you decide to do to get your brand out there for, for leads and conversions has to be rooted in the strongest brand possible so that stuff like this can actually do what you need it to do. But here's the biggest thing I want you to keep in mind as I referred to earlier. You're not offering a product. And by the way, those of you who, who are perhaps product manufacturers or resellers who are watching this presentation, please do not feel alienated, okay? The principles, methods, and approaches that I'm sharing here will apply to all of you. But I really wanna to speak to those of you who are offering expertise. If that's you, put that in the chat box, say, that's me, that's me, that's me. Because like I said, here's the thing, you're selling the invisible. 
in the eyes of your target audience, you're selling vapor. And you can no longer say, as it was before the internet, that you're good at what you do, you've got a great client base, you're well-educated, and on and on and on, because in today's internet-driven world, that's no longer sufficient. So the question becomes, how do you sell something that people cannot see? Because remember, when you've got a product, we get to sample the goods in advance. We can see, taste, touch, smell, or hear the product before we put any money out. We can, we can take the kids to the, into the pet shop to play with the puppy. We can go into Trader Joe's. I don't know if you have those in... Um, I think you got what Target? We got something else in Canada. We got Trader Joe's. What's yours called? It's something like anyway. We can we can go in there and, and try the food sample, right? We get to do whatever it is that we need to do to decide that that product is something that we want to buy. And one of my favorite quotes is from a professor at the Harvard Business School, Theodore Lovett. And I'm and I am paraphrasing him when I say this. He says, the biggest challenge with branding, marketing, and selling, any kind of intangible, any kind of skill, talent, ability, any kind of services is that the customer does not know what they're getting until they do not get it. Hmm. Hmm. At which point, he says, dissatisfaction dwells which means they're pissed off. Hmm. So what's the solution? The solution is to big brand your expertise, to brand it in such a way that it shows up as a physical product in their mind and in their heart. Does that make sense? Yes, yes? So here we go. I only got 50 minutes. You know, we've already seen how Roger flows. Roger is a clock watch master. I got to do this in time. But my request is that you please stick around because I'm going to share with you these principles, methods, and approaches so you can get known, get found, and get paid. Does that sound good? And I also want you to stick around at the end, to the end because I've got a free gift for each of you that will show you how to leverage these three secrets I'm about to share with you and further overcome those three challenges so that you can start getting more clients and making more money. Fair enough? Say, I'm with you, Jerry. Give me some love, everybody. Jerry, I'm a sensitive guy, okay? I need love, I need love, okay? So, okay, okay, All right, I'll take your word on it. So what do you do? The first thing you have to do is make the decision to be the honey and not the fly. Honey attracts. Flies chase. And one of the reasons why the Wall Street Journal, for example, once said that the number one business building tool for companies in America is that they use branding. And then he went on to say, it's also the most misunderstood word. See, there's many layers to branding. There's many colors to branding. Now, remember, I majored in this stuff in college, and I've made branding my life's work. All I've done my entire life is branding. But I'm going to give you a quick, big picture perspective. Level one, write this down, is called strategic branding. That's where your goal is to make sure that your brand your business, your services, whatever, has the strongest body, voice, and spirit possible. Are you with me? Level two is called visual branding. And the goal in level two is to now bring that brand to life visually, okay? Through your website, through your design work, Maybe you want to do podcasting and on and on and on. And then level three is called 
and this has emerged in recent years, this is called social media branding, where you're now harnessing the power of Instagram, Facebook, and yada, yada, yada. So you got to go from one level to the next to the next. Now, there's four phases to brand development. So what I'm doing now is I'm giving you all a big picture on how to be the honey and not the fly, okay? There's four phases to brand development, regardless of how long you've been in business, what you're offering, and on and on and on. I don't care if you're here for brand repair, rebranding, or creating a brand from scratch. Phase one is called brand architecture. Please write this down, okay? Because this is about scaling. This is about you scaling to get to wherever, whatever scaling means to you. Phase one, brand architecture. Your goal here is to make sure that you have all the key strategic branding components in place so that you have what's called a standalone brand. Very, very important. Standalone brand. Okay? And as you bring these pieces together, you're able to end up saying the right things the right way to the right people. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> okay. Now, the technical term for this foundational piece here is called your brand strategy. And your brand strategy is the blueprint that you now grow from. Are you with me? So this is very much like building a house. If you were gonna build a house, the first thing you would do is what? You would start with an architect and the architect would create a blueprint. So in my world, you could call me, what's, what a lot of people call me this, I'm a brand architect. And so what we do is we create your blueprint. And now this blueprint goes to phase two, which is called brand building. So just like in home construction, that blueprint goes from the architect to the builder. Now, what's the builder do? The builder is going to bring in who? The construction crew to build a house, right? The plumber, the electricians, the carpenters, and the whole nine yards. So in my world, my, my uh, version of that construction crew is your marketing team. Someone to do your website, someone to create your social media campaign, someone to help create your funnel, your offers, and on and on and on, your design work, blah, 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 blah. And you're also determining in phase two, how are you going to monetize your brand? Should you create a course? Should you create some kind of challenge? Should you create some kind of program? And on and on and on. But here's the thing. Everything that gets created in phase two from a, from a creative development marketing standpoint must be anchored, watch this, in the foundation laid down in phase one so that you have what's called brand congruency or otherwise known as brand synergy, which means that the branding and the marketing are coming together now to do what it is that you need it to do. And let's be real here. If you have ever dealt with a marketing person, and if you do not give them a brand to root their work in, what do a lot of marketing people like to do? Sell the shiny objects. And oftentimes, people end up investing in stuff like funnels and challenges and offers and on and on and on, and they're not even ready for that yet. Okay, are you with me? Don't trust me, I hear all the horror stories. Okay, they all come to Uncle Jerry. Okay, and then you go to phase three, which is called brand implementation. So now you're out there taking the marketing that got developed in phase two, anchored in the foundation laid down in phase one, and now in, in phase three, you're getting leads and conversions, you're getting clients, you're having more impact, and so you're making your money in phase three. And then phase four is called brand management, where you're now managing your brand by the numbers, by the metrics to do what it is that you need your brand to do. So you move from brand architecture to brand building, to brand implementation, to brand management. Now, why do I share this? I share this because in my 30 plus years of doing this work, 
I've noticed two trap doors that most, not most, but many entrepreneurs fall into. I don't care if they're selling widgets or services. Trap door number one, everybody's trying to get to phase three as quickly as they can because they're driven by a conversation in their head called, well, money needs to be made, bills have to be paid. And they try anything to get customers. And they fail to recognize that if you are marketing and selling a brand, as opposed to your services or even a product, your marketing is going to be more effective because it then requires what are called fewer impressions, which means you don't have to send out, send out as many emails. You don't need to do as many social media postings. And so therefore, $1 works like $5 and you get a higher return on your marketing investment. But then they say, no, Jerry, I've got a brand. I got a logo. <laughs> Jerry, I gotta... Jerry, um, everyone's slide is still seeing the honey and the fly. I'm still on that slide. Roger, Roger, I'm on a roll. Okay. Okay. So you throw me off, Roger. Okay. Sorry. This is Sorry. Okay. Now my point, where was it? Okay. And so they say, Jerry, I've got a logo because I got colors. Don't you like my colors? Okay. So why do I say that? Don't put the cart before the horse. Make sure you do things in the right sequence, which is brand market sell. So everyone put a triangle on a sheet of paper, draw a triangle, please. At the top of the triangle, write the word brand, lower left-hand corner, the word market, lower right-hand corner, the word sell, and that's your sequence. Create your brand and then market and sell the heck out of it. It's always branding, followed by marketing, followed by selling. They're equally important. One is not more important than the other. All three legs have to be in place. The job of branding is to differentiate you. The job of marketing is to get people to notice that difference and want that difference. And the job of selling is to get people to pay for that difference. Oh, you missed it. Let me, let me break it down this way. Branding will get you known. Marketing will get you found. And selling will get you paid. Can I get an amen, a high five from somebody here in Canada, please? Are you with me? That's the title of this talk. Now. Don't put the tile down before the cabins are up. All right? So you can avoid a lot of problems. So here's big branding secret number one. The more authentically different you are, the more you make your brand worth saving as. So put your focus on getting across how you were different and why you were better as opposed to touting your services or expertise. I'm just gonna read this. Where and when are you being the best at something few others really know how to do that comes hard to them or something that nobody else can do, which is your zone of genius. Now, what's my point? Listen, everybody, write this down. There's three levels you can play at. Me too, me special, or me only. Me too is when the perception on the part of your target audience is that you're just another penguin in the flock. And so now they commoditize their expertise. Me special are those of you who might say, no, Jerry, I am different. And I go, well, really, are you relevant? Remember MySpace? Remember Blockbuster? The level you want to play at is level three called me only. Look at the second point here which is where you have nailed down your zone of genius and you're willing to root your brand in the one thing that you excel at doing, only your business can easily provide. And so what we're finding is that these solopreneurs and other businesses who are creating these multi-million dollar brands within a relatively short period of time totally embrace this slide. Make a note of it. Me only as opposed to me too or me also. Because when you are a me only brand, you've made the decision to lead the crowd, not follow the crowd, deviate, not conform. Everybody with me? Okay. So ask yourself this. I want you guys right now to think about some of your ideal clients, the ones you really love, the ones you want more of. What are they sick and tired of putting up with? What's not working that they want to have work better? What would they like to change for the better? So that you can then pivot your brand on your ability to get rid of that thing that's really bothering them. 
Okay. I love telling the story, but I used to work with a guy, Procter & Gamble, by the way, that's where I worked at P&G in strategic branding. And so I worked in brand manager and I used to work with a guy named Dean Butler. He worked in the cubicle behind me, but make a long story short, it took his wife to the optometrist one day because she couldn't, you know, she needed to get her glasses fixed. And they go, well, when can they, when would the glasses be ready? And they said, come back in about 10 days. And Dean goes, what's the problem? You got to wait 10 days. That's crazy. He goes, well, we got to ship them out of state. And by the time they come back, you know, 10 days and they storm out the guy's office. He didn't want his wife to walk around blind for 10 days. And so he spent the next year analyzing that industry, quit. He left, mortgaged his house, started a small business called Lens Crafters. Okay. You're not getting it. Okay. See, great brands focus on this. And each of you should ask yourself, what is that? You know, this, this is a young lady named Georgina Sweeney. And in her case, after she embraced just that one principle, look at what's in the left-hand corner. She, she said she got clear on what she stood for, what she offered the world, but never knew how to communicate, grow her business quickly. And she, went to, she got the six figures in less than four months, just from embracing that secret, number one. Six figures in less than four months. So that leads to... Big brand secret number two, which is to be a me only brand and not me also. Now, why is that? Now, I want to ask you guys this. Please write in the chat box, what was the name of the last brand you bought? I'm just curious. Whatever with this, put the, just whatever that, I, I don't care if it's Apple, Dave's Bread. I just like to know. What are, okay, here we go. Sweaty Betty. <laughs> Adidas, Life is Good, Gatorade. Benjamin Moore, these are great. Coca-Cola. Okay, excellent. Any others? That's it, four people? Okay, Nike, okay. Now, those of you who answered the question, KFC, look at the second question. Why did you buy that brand? What was your reason for choosing that brand? Please put that in the chat box. What made you choose KFC, Nike, Bet Sweaty Betty? Lululemon, why did you choose those brands? I'm curious. It's my son's favorite brand. The style is my style. There was a perception of quality. I had confidence in the quality. These are good. Finger looking. <laughs> I want you all to notice. Look at these reasons. Do you want to know what you all have in common around what you are stating as the reason you bought those brands? One word, and you wanna know what that word is? Because. You chose that brand because. So what great branders do, I just wanna make sure you're connected to dots here. Number one, brand secret, secret number one, they find the gap in the marketplace that nobody is filling. They differentiate themselves by saying their brand is not about their expertise, but about an experience. So for example, Nike doesn't sell sneakers, they sell greatness. Airbnb doesn't sell home rentals, they're in the business of people belonging anywhere. Tony Robbins does not sell life coaching and motivational speaking, he sells life on your own terms. He declared that 30 years ago. Oprah built her empire around ladies, lead your fulfilled life. DollarShadeClub.com guy built an empire by saying, we deliver high quality razor blades to your front door in a few bucks a month and sold the brand for $5 billion in five years. So you have to nail down why would someone work with you? Because the most successful service-based companies from Amazon to Vistaprint to Stanley Steamer anchored their success in a formula. They have a system, process, or method for getting results that showcases how they serve and deliver. That's why when you watch a TV commercial, if Bounty Paper Towel says, Bounty, the quicker picker up or let the spills begin. And then on the TV commercial, they say, oh, Bounty absorbs two times more liquid than any other paper towel because we've got something called trap and lock technology. And we sit there and go, oh, wow, nobody else has that. So what's my point? Each of you needs to nail down your trap and lock technology, which becomes your secret sauce, which is your because statement. 
And this becomes what's called your core differentiator, the, the crowning jewel of your brand that you now create your courses and programs from. You speak on stages, if that's of interest to you. This is how you are able to have massive passive income because you now become known for that special thing you do that makes your, read what it says, that makes your brand worth more and makes you rich. In other words, you don't offer services, you offer a secret sauce. So I want everybody who's looking at me right now, go like this, put, put a fist up. Everyone put a fist up. Come on, Canada and America. You ready? Go, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. That's the game. You come, you say, I'm gonna be a me-only brand known for a secret sauce that nobody can duplicate, imitate, or negate because I don't have time for this. It's rooted in what's called your brand DNA. The way you serve, the way you deliver, the way you lead. And that's how you scale and get to seven figures pretty fast. Is that of interest to anybody, okay? This young lady here, and this is, this is a recent study. Her name is Tiffany. She's an emotional care touch. She shared this story with me two weeks ago. She said, okay, Jerry, I, you, I gotta meet with this prospect. And, and I, okay, I believe you, Jerry. She said, don't offer services, offer a system. Don't offer services, offer a process. Don't offer services, offer a method. She sits down with the woman, walks her through the secret sauce because when you put together your branding system, it has to be framed a certain way. So you get what's called buy-in. Halfway through, look at the top of the slide, the woman turns to her and says, this is exactly what I need. You don't have to go any further. And then send her $6,000. She made more in 48 hours than she had made in the last two months. Because look at the, look at the lower left-hand corner. She wanted to know how I could help her and love getting an understanding of how it all worked. The details I provided definitely helped. She was able to attach emotionally and tune in. It got her to sign up. Remember, don't say you have services because you're selling the invisible. Transform that into a secret sauce. Let go of it. Tap into your zone of genius. Does this make sense? And then branding secret number three, and we'll be done here in a minute, Roger. So chill, 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 is this. Convey your unique value through your brand promise and message. Convey your unique value through your brand promise and message. I call this the $100,000 rule. And what I mean by that is simply this. Here's my question. If you had absolutely no limitations on declaring the difference you'll make in a client's life what ridiculously irresistible promise are you willing to make and juicy message to convey on delivering that promise? You remember at the beginning, I said, people buy an experience. So what you do is you don't say, first, I have services, and then you don't get into a features and benefit presentation about your services. No, uh -uh. have a mind shift here. Watch this. You speak what your promises in terms of what's in it for them. And then you convey that through your message. So here's the deal. Asterisk this slide as well. It's been shown in branding that people don't buy products and services. What you all are selling, what people want to know from you is one, number one, what problem for them will you solve? What is that painful, annoying problem that you can make go away? Number two, are there outcomes you can improve for them? They're looking to go from here to wherever they want to go. And they want to know what advantages do you offer through your brand over other alternatives? Because remember, I said 1.8, 1.7 billion websites, people are blending in and not standing out. And so therefore, they want to hear why you are the better choice. So now you can see why your, your image is not going to help deliver that, okay? Number three, can you perform a miracle in their eyes? I bet some of you have clients who have hired you because they were in dire straits and they needed someone with your brilliance to help turn their situation around in their midnight in today. Can I get an amen from somebody? By the way, they call me the brand evangelist, but I toned it down because, you know, 
I don't want to do a rah-rah thing here. You all ain't ready for that, okay? I'm, 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 I'm at a four right now, okay? So here's the deal. Show people that you can make the impossible possible. Now, in my world, we call that miracle branding. In the extreme of that is when you see TV commercials, for example, that sell the fantasy of it all. I'll show you how to lose 20 pounds in 20 days without going hungry. Ta-da! Hey, we can get rid of your belly fat in 10 days. Whoa. We can get rid of your migraine headache in five minutes. Whoa. Oh, men, want a six-pack app? Use the app machine. Sit on your couch and you can have a six-pack in 30 days. You don't have to go anywhere, right? That's called miracle branding. My point, though, is that if you can say to someone that you can deliver new possibilities that they never thought were possible, we pivot your brand around this. And then number four, what emotional payoff do you provide? Think about this. Think about some of your ideal clients because your brand has to be configured strategically to attract your perfect client. And ask yourself, what were some of the negative emotions that they were dealing with? Nobody wants to feel stressed out. Nobody wants to be feel overwhelmed or confused. When I was at P&G, I used to co-manage a little brand that maybe some of you have heard of called Cascade right? Cascade dishwasher detergent. Now, when I was co-managing Cascade detergent, we would have someone reach into the dishwasher, pull out a glass, hold it up to a light source like my ring light here and go, oh my God, spots. I can't put these glasses out. I got company coming in in, in 40 minutes. I, my mom's going to be here in 20 minutes. Oh my God, what do I do? The sky is falling. The sky is falling. And then we would say, well, you should use Cascade. <laughs> Because we'll get your dishes virtually spotless because of our secret sauce called sheeting action. Now, nobody knew what sheeting action was, but anyway, it had to do with the way the water cascades off the glass. But here's the point. We discovered through research that the main reason why people bought the Cascade brand, and by the way, there's something like 80% of every household in America that has a dishwasher uses Cascade. Just hold on to that for a second. Anyway, that's crazy, isn't it? And so here's the thing. What we found out, the reason why people bought Cascade is nobody want to feel embarrassed by how their dishes look coming out of the dishwasher. So we created a whole branding campaign called No Embarrassing Moments. <laughs> and it shot our sales through the roof. And so right now, I want each of you to please think about, hey, what problems am I solving for people? What outcomes am I improving? What miracles am I performing? What emotional payoff am I giving people? Tie a ribbon around it, be in it, grab it, blab it, walk in it, so that you can do what everybody, speak emotionally to the heart, because this allows you to sell the sizzle and not the steak. You can sell the bubbles and not the champagne because it's time for some of you to sell the whiff of the coffee and not the coffee. Are you with me? If so, say, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's the game here, everybody. This is how you get engagement. This is how you get found. Because people make buying decisions based on emotion backed by logic. And I wonder if I were to look at your websites and look at what you're personally putting out there, are you being too logical? Anyway, I have all types of folks that I work with uh, I mean, these are, these are all past clients and students. They all have major stories. I'm not going to get into that because I don't have enough time. People who come to me, come to me for the reasons that I just shared. And all of these people, just like the young lady who's on the call tonight, Sharon, who said, I love you, Jerry. She's only been in two sessions with me. And I have a lot of clients over Canada. I've done extensive work in Canada. I put six here on the screen. And all of these folks were able to just have extraordinary things happen for them. So just to close this, because I know Roger, you know, we're on, we're on the clock here. We're gonna do a little Q and A. As some of you are saying, yikes to all this. I do have a free gift. If you go to jerryfosterbranding.com forward slash captivate, I'd like to give each of you my one hour video training course called Stand Out and Captivate. I cover everything I just talked about, even in more deta details. It's only one hour long and there are about seven to nine videos. You're going to love it. It was done live 
on a stage in front of a big crowd. You get to see the Brandon Evangelist <laughs> live and in person, but that's a fun program. And I'd like to give this to each of you as my free gift, okay? And do know that what I share in this free giveaway, my clients pay top dollar for these tips. And today I'm just gonna give it to you for free because I love Roger. Roger knows I love him. He's like my brother from another mother, okay? Oh, and it also includes $1,000 worth of bonuses, okay? So on top of the, on top of the videos, $1,000 worth of bonuses, one of which is a brainstorming session with me by Zoom one-on-one -on -one that I normally charge $800 for. And here's the thing, I don't sell. So don't be hesitant. This is, a, is a, I'm extending an olive branch to you. So I would suggest if you want me to get to know you and see what you're doing and brainstorm with me, that's part of the video, okay? And I promise no selling. If you haven't noticed this already, I'm a giver, not a taker. I didn't come here and say, oh, let me give you all two little tips. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Oh, and check, oh, and there's my cell. By the way, uh, I'm, a, I'm a texter, text me, okay? That's my cell, I'm, I'm on WhatsApp. For, so for those of you who use WhatsApp, you can go out WhatsApp or the other way, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Roger. And uh, Jerry, uh, the email that you would like people to reach you at is info at jerryfosterbranding.com. Yeah, or support, support at jerryfosterbranding.com. But the main thing is text me or um, grab my giveaway. Yeah. Great. Uh, so we actually have eight minutes left. Uh, hey, all right. Feel free, well done, Jerry. Congratulations. So uh, audience, feel free to pitch in with any questions you've got for Jerry. I suggest you uh, unmute if you have, do have a question. Did you guys get value? Let me look in the chat box. Okay, there we go. All right, I got a hand. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're, you're well loved. <laughs> Are there any questions? Yeah, I just tried to go on that uh, web page that Jerry just had in the yeah, then I, it, I couldn't I couldn't get in. It just says unable to. It was blocked. No, you can get it. I just was looking at it before I got on. JerryFosterBrandy.com forward slash captivate. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, put the www in front of it. Are you in Canada? Yeah, see that. Yes. Try that. Yeah, try that or HTTP, but it's there. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, it's there. Okay, Jacinta? Yeah, I'll, I'll try not. Are there any uh, concluding so, so questions, Q &A. Jerry? Uh, it just says this page has been blocked by an extension. I don't know what that means. I don't either. Yeah. Vera try, likes it. Yeah, yeah. Try another browser. Yeah, try another browser. What Bro do you mean another browser? I'm sorry, I'm not very- Google Chrome, excited. Firefox. I'm on Google Chrome. Okay, yeah, try um, Firefox or Firefox. Edge. Are you a PC or a Mac? Um, PC. Yeah, try Edge, Microsoft Edge, yeah. Any questions though? Let's, let's, let's focus on that, okay? Was this useful, you guys? You guys are shy, man. You guys, <laughs> they're all saying it works in the chat box. Okay. You have me thinking. Yeah. I got you thinking. What are you thinking? Who is that? Let me do it. This stop. is Greg. Hold on. I'll Greg from Dallas, Texas. And I'm thinking about how I can understand how to figure out my branding. Okay. That's all. Because I've never had any branding before. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's been word of mouth. Yeah. Let me, let me reply to that. Okay. You got to know it's, it's who, what, and how. Who's your market? What should you say? And how do you best say it? Okay. Right. So you want to make sure you're going after your ideal clients who fit a profile. And so you want to get people who are hungry for what you have. Number two, you want to say something different because people today prefer working with entrepreneurs who dare to be different, meaning you're willing to create something different, build something different 
and do something different so that you can create a vibe through your brand because it's all about vibration and energy in terms of connecting. Does that make sense to anybody? And so when you're looking to vibe with your target audience, you got to make heart connections, man. And you have to focus on what is that one thing that you do that only you can do so that you're me only and not me too. Understood. But you may not know what that is because this is a, this is a mind shift conversation here. Exactly. All right. So what I would suggest is download the uh, training program and have a brainstorming session with you. Okay. You're on it. And, you know. There's uh, two hands up. One is Jacinta, the other is Monica D. Oh, I'm okay now. I, I'm going to try. Monica D, do you have a question? Um, yeah, it's, uh, Jerry, I'd like it, um, more asking some comment on this. When you um, spoke about um, what uh, problems will you solve, what outcomes will you... Um, improve outcomes uh, miracles and emotional promissory yes. and then one you those, followed it's with one those, and, it's one of those four or a combination thereof uh, and you followed with an example of cascade which is a physical product so um i'm new to marketing or new to this world it seems like there's um sure, sure, I understand. lots of overlap between product and service yes yeah, very in, simple. in the way you brand yeah yes yeah, very simple are you ready i'm gonna ask you a mm -hmm. question okay I want you to think about who your ideal client is. If you could wave a magic wand and you wanted your brand to attract a certain client, do you have that person in mind? No. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let me ask you, let me see if I'm a different angle. So, so you know what? I, I'm just trying to find myself in this new, like, I know the introductions were a lot. I'm the one person on the call who's retired coming out of IT project management for many years. And I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going back into. So no, I don't have the answer to that question. Yeah, ask, put yourself in their shoes. Ask yourself, mm -hmm. what are they sick and tired of putting up with? What are they trying mm -hmm. to change? What would they like to have work better in their life? That was the whole example with Dean who created lens crafters. Yes. Very simple. People should not have to wait 10 days for a pair of glasses, for goodness sakes. There was a story about the guy who went to the dealership to get an oil change. Oh, guy, the guy goes, go come back this afternoon. I only need an oil change. So what's he do? He creates a small business called Jiffy Lube with the brand promise of, of uh, oil change in 30 minutes. Right. So you got to ask, so, so you, you got to think in terms of, you get, and Brandy, write this down. Let me throw this in for free. There's, a, there's two adages in Brandy. Number one, think the way the customer thinks. Don't think the way you think. Stand in their shoes. Adage number two, you never create a new conversation you enter into the one that's in their head. Right. Now, when you do that, that should open up for each of you. Okay. Do they want you to address their pain? Their greatest fears, frustrations, challenges, worries, headaches, heartaches, problems, obstacles, or what they can gain? Can you help them be more, achieve more, do more? So there's two types of prospects, right? I'm separating suspects and prospects. They're those who are pain avoiders and those who are pleasure seekers. And so you have to decide who's most likely to want to work with you. Typically in service businesses, if you're in a service business, your main prospect is the low hanging fruit is probably somebody who's bothered by something. Right. And so you create your secret sauce to say you have something that is superior. Look, listen, everybody, when someone comes across your website, your social media campaign or whatever, they have two questions. How are you, write this down. How are you different? Why are you better? How are you different? Why are you better? How are you different? Why are you better? How you are different is by having what? A me only statement. Which says you're the only expert, authority, whatever. Do some of you want to be looked upon as the go-to brand in your space? Raise your hand, please. Is that of interest to you? You want to be looked upon as the authority, right? Well, listen, just remember, there's three levels. Me only, me special, me too. In order to be me only, you have to own your greatness and your own brilliance and step into that 
and say that the reason why I can do this better than anybody else can do it is because nobody's got my DNA. The way you think, the way you solve, the way you serve, the way you deliver, what you know works and doesn't work. And you craft that from a branding standpoint into some kind of process, formula, method, put people on a path, whatever. And that's what you scale around. That's your core differentiator. When Tony Robbins declared in 1987, my brand is life on your own terms. Anybody remember what his secret sauce was? You remember the book, Personal Power? And what was his shtick? He had people walking on hot coals. Anybody remember that? Oh, you guys are too young. Okay, that's fair. You are too young. Okay. All right. How about Bob Proctor? Anybody remember what it was for the late great Bob Proctor? Thinking into results. Les Brown, live your dreams. Does this make sense? You guys look, you guys look bored, man. I'm, I better, I just better be quiet. Jerry, you've got uh, hands up from uh, Alan <laughs> and uh, uh, and Roy, and let's call it a night after those two questions. Alan, what's your question? Uh, no, just uh, agreeing what Jerry is saying there. I have um, some very large clients. And when I look at, uh, you know, they say to me, are we going to go with pay-per-click? We're going to go with uh, SEO. I turn around and say, well, what's your brand? And they don't really have it because, and I say to them, if you don't have a proper brand, when you do your pay-per-click, it's going to go nowhere because nobody knows who you are. They're not going to click on it. You're not going to think, oh, yeah, I'm going to go with this. So yeah, branding is hugely important. Well done. Yeah, because thank you. Thank you. You got to tell people who you are and not what you do. Again, I want to get to take a look at some of your websites. I'm really curious about this crowd. I would love to know, are you telling people what you do or who you are? How are you showing up in the world? That's the key. All right. And, and showing up in the world today is not about talking about your experience, your certifications, your trainings, your expertise, your achievements, and your client list. If you feel the need to want to tell somebody, they'll tell your parents. Let's get real here. When you're talking to prospects, all they really want to know is how are you different? Why are you better? How are you different? Why are you better? And you got to bottom line it to me. If you want, Roger, right now, I'll brand somebody in, 10, in, in 30 seconds. Anybody want to volunteer? I'll brand you. Uh, Jerry, let uh, do that privately when, oh, okay. when people contact you. Roy, you've got the last question, and then we're going to shut her down for the evening. Roy, what's your question? Roy, you're muted. Roy. Roy Jackson. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to say I really enjoyed your presentation and appreciate the fact that you shared such great information with all of us tonight. I'm glad um, you, I'm, I appreciate that because I just wrote this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I think it was. I, I hate to say this was a rehearsal, but I hope you all really appreciated it because I, I spent like nine hours Sunday on it. But go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> really appreciated it. And uh, I, I'm actually, I'm a CPA. I own my own firm. I've been in business for over 23 years. And I'm really at that second stage that you mentioned earlier, where uh, I met that rebranding and a stage where I'm trying to refresh the company and, and sort of take a reset and re-engineer our process. Uh, we have excellent clients out, out, out in, the, uh, in the community, uh, like I said, but, but it just seems that we're having difficulty sort of growing through the ceiling. Like we can always get one client at a time, but we can't perform three or four clients simultaneously at, at the same time. Well, you know, Roy, and, let me um, just, Roy, can I just say one thing? Remember the, the sequence, brand market sell. The brand has to fuel the marketing. See, your, your brand is going to get people to bond with you. Once that bonding occurs, then marketing takes over. Now, what's the job of marketing? To forge that brand. Well, how do you do that? By getting them to know, like, and trust you. Well, how do you do that? Oh, let's create a funnel. Let's do this. You follow me? You, and, and so they have to work together. Well, well, my question to you is how long and how much? Uh, uh, in terms of the average client that you take on, how long does that process take before you start to see results? And about how much is the average, average cost for your consultation services? Well, I'll, we can have that one-on-one, -on -one, but I do have a reputation. It's uh, Sharon here. Sharon will tell you, you'd be shocked at how inexpensive I am. 
Okay. Am I right, Sharon? Raise your hand, Sharon. Okay. All right. I, I don't want to put that out here. I my primary market are solopreneurs who, for the most part, have very little money to spend. Okay. All right. I have what's called a servant's heart. Because I'm purpose driven and not money driven. Okay. Yeah. And so you my, have no no. And you have you have, you service a lot of clients here in the U.S. Oh, yeah. I'm, I mean, on my website alone, JerryFosterBranding.com, there's like a hundred videos and letters from people all over North America. You can read them, listen to what they had to say. I showed you right. some images of them. Yeah. No, but I'm, I'm fine. Well, thank you very much once again. I really appreciate your presentation. I'm trying to be humble here, guys. <laughs> I really am. Yeah. Jerry, I'm, I'm going to draw things to a close by uh, thanking you on behalf of EIN's members. Um, as always, you perform, uh, which is why I invite you back every year. Uh, you never disappoint. Sometimes oh. you don't show up on time but you never disappoint when you're here. <laughs> oh, and I thank you, Roger. And I appreciate all, look at all the praise you're giving me. That means a lot to me, by the way. We all need to be appreciated, seriously. It's very important. So yeah. thank, and I look forward to connecting with each of you who um, want to dance with me, okay? Seriously, let's have some fun. Let's brainstorm. I love brainstorm. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> all right, thank you, Roger. I'm going to go have a skinny margarita. Good night, all. I see some of you next Tuesday. Goodbye for now. Bye, everybody. Good night. God bless you all. Bye bye.